Hi, I'm Konstantinos, and in this video, I would like to show you my point of view in one of the most important SAP process orchestration message mapping topics, the contexts. We came up with the idea to create a series of short guidance videos with SAP process orchestration related topics. And in this video, I would like to start with one of the most crucial SAP PO message mapping topic. Of course, I'm talking about cues and contexts. So let's start with the basics. In SAP PO, every XML message is being parsed in a collection of cues. That means that for each element of the source structure, there are separate cues with sets of values. Here, for example, this is the queue for the node item. Every occurrence of the item is in the display queue. You can display this queue for any element of a message mapping, just right-clicking on the element and selecting display queue. Let's have a look at the queue of the packets. As you can see, we have only one occurrence of the packets in our XML, so it is being listed only once in the display queue. Additionally, based on the source message and the mapping logic, there are new queues created for the target message. Every mapping function, simple one-to-one -one mapping, standard SAP PO functions or custom URDFs are performed on queues, so the queues can be amended according to the requirements. These properly created queues are building the whole target structure. But we need one more thing in order to place the queue values in the correct order in the target structure. Context of an element is just the level of the XML tag that appears in the given XML document. Every element under the same parent node and in the same level belongs to the same context. So in the same example, all the items are under the same parent node, so they belong to the same context. The tricky thing is that you can choose at which level the context should be placed. By default, the level of any element is set to the immediate parent node. I will show it to you in a moment. And here comes the context change. Context change is just changing the level of the XML tag in the XML document. So let's look at a more complex example. Here you can see that we've got uh, one occurrence of this item under one package, and then we've got a context change. You can see the gray lines here in the display queue. They are nothing more but just the indication of a context change. So we've got one context change after the first item in the first package, then after the second item in the second package, again, we've got another context change, then we've got two items and another context change, and lastly, under the last package, three items and another context change. Also, we can have a look at the context change of the packages. As we can see, under the transport, there are three occurrences of the package. So we've got our three occurrences here, and then a context change. And under the second transport, there is one package and the context change. Let's see now how the context will look like if we change the context level from the parent node of the item to the transport node. As you can see, under the first transport, we've got four items and then a context change. And again, for the second transport, three items and a context change. Let's also have a look at the context if we change the level now to the main node, to the context reimagined. As you can see, all the items are under this main node, so all the items belong to the same context. I believe now you have a clear understanding of queues and contexts. There are plenty of ways to maintain the queues and context in message mapping in order to achieve the wanted target structure. On my next video, I will get into the details of some standard SAP PO mapping functions related to context handling. If you faced any complex scenarios related to context handling, you can share it with us in order to help future learners. In case of any questions, don't hesitate to hit me up on LinkedIn. And of course, don't forget to check out the rest of 94 videos.